Upon entering Oleander's mind, Raz finds himself in a recruiting office with Elton. This is understandable considering Oleander's militaristic personality traits. He perceives that training the kids at Whispering Rock is similar to recruiting them for war. His speech at the start of the game further elaborates this perspective. After punching the projection, Raz is thrust forth into a war zone. The coach has crafted an obstacle course in his mind using images that make the students feel as though they are in the middle of a battle. Oleander's mindscape is characterized by combat knives sticking out of the ground, ammo belts that act as shrubs, missiles about to go off, and set pieces taken directly from battles. Below the missile, Lily is investigating a meat flower with her herbophony, stating it has been showing up in these nightmares she has been having. Lily's specialty is the ability to communicate with plants, as detailed on her campster account. After parachuting down from a plane, the coach brings Raz's attention to a mental vault. The mind creates this to safeguard secrets and other formative memories from the individual's life. This one shows heroic events from Oleander's military career. From there, we travel through several more set pieces into a field of bunnies, a naval battle, minefields, and other war-related scenes. By the time Raz completes the obstacle course, he finds a side path leading to a white room with schematics. The ornamental trim in this room depicts white bunnies along the floor and ceiling. Before he can see anything, the coach forces him out and gives him a merit badge for passing the basic braining course. This is all we learned during our initial visit through more so Oleander's mind. Largely, the figments in basic braining are war-related as well. These would be combat knives, bombs, soldiers, and barricades. There are some figments that are amiss from this theme, however. These would be chickens with army helmets, as well as meat cleavers. From here, we have a reoccurring theme with the meat flowers and meat cleavers in this mindscape. So what did we learn about the man? On face value, we learn he is a military veteran, scarred by battle and the loss of fellow soldiers. The trouble is, this persona is entirely manufactured and false. In the latter half of the level, we find a vault that is stuck behind some mental cobwebs. The player doesn't have access to its contents until much later in the game. When we do, we look into a vault called Oleander's Shame. It turns out that Marceau was never accepted into any branch of the military due to his short stature. Every one of them kicked him out, which built up a sense of resentment in the man. If we look back to the first vault, entitled Oleander's Pride, he imagines himself as having longer legs and other features. The memory the coach brings our attention to is a glorified fantasy of his, one portraying him as the person he imagines he should have been. In order to understand Coach Oleander in the basic braining level, we will have to look at a mental exercise called the Jahari Window. Developed by Joseph Luft and Harry Ingham in 1955, it is a method that helps to better understand the psyche of yourself and others you meet. The premise is that there are four windows within the Jahari house that represents four categories of how others perceive us and we see ourselves. These can be things like emotions, character traits, or behaviors. The first is called the arena. It is represented by aspects of our personal self that is known to ourselves and known to others. For example, a concert pianist knows that they are a talented musician, and everyone who sees this individual perform knows this as well. The second window is called the blind spot. This is where others see something in you that you cannot see yourself. An example of this is that you have a high opinion of yourself and everyone sees you as a terrible person. Or conversely, you have a negative opinion of yourself and others see you as a wonderful person. The third category is the mask. This is where there is something that you know about yourself and no one else does. This is generally some aspect of our personality or history that we do not want others to know. It can be as simple as having a crush on someone but are too shy to say, or having something shameful in our past we want to keep hidden. Whether for selfish or benevolent reasons, we all keep secrets from each other. As more of ourself is attributed to this window, our mask becomes more defined until people are unable to see the real you. The final window is called the unknown. This is something that you do not know about yourself, and others do not know about you either. 
This section covers mostly unconscious characteristics of ourselves that no one knows. Until it is drawn out of us, it will remain unknown to everyone. From what we have seen in Basic Braining, Coach Oleander's third window, the mask, is the largest. The mindscape he crafted for the campers to practice is 100% fabricated to portray himself as a hardened war veteran. Marceau never served in the military and instead created a false persona that he displayed to the world. However, there are aspects of his unconscious that poke through. As you may have noticed, his psyche seems to be fixated on meat. Much like a daisy growing through a crack in the concrete, a meat flower literally sprouts from his unconscious mind into the rest of his masked reality. Figments showing meat cleavers can be seen throughout the level. Once Raz learns the clairvoyance ability, he can return to the field of bunnies and learn how they perceive the young psychic. They see him as a hulking figure brandishing a bloody knife. I will not go into further detail on this meat-filled theme as the root of Oleander's trauma will be handled in a separate video. The second crack in this manufactured mindscape is the white room Raz uncovered at the end. More so did not intend any of the campers to make it to the end, so he didn't put up any defenses in that area. Upon revisiting, the metal door to that room is closed and chains keep it safe from further intrusion. In conclusion, we learn that the self-image of the perfect soldier that Oleander has created for himself was proven to not align with reality, and his height is the cause of it. Incongruence is when reality and our self-image are not compatible. If the difference is small, we generally ignore it or rationalize it away so our self-image remains intact. However, when a life-changing event occurs, such as being rejected by every branch of the military, we are thrown into psychological turmoil. To quote from a paper called Self-Image Incongruence Theory of Individual Health by Dennis Rancourt, when such events occur that cause incongruence between self-image and reality, there is a primal psychometabolic reaction, there is stress, and the individual's primary task becomes to resolve the micro or macro identity crisis. In order to do this, there are three paths we can take. One, to accept a difficult truth about ourselves that change our self-image to be more in line with reality. Two, to take proactive steps to improve ourselves and allow reality to be closer to our self-image. Or three, to do neither, which allows the psychological symptoms of incongruence to worsen. This can lead to the individual growing angry with that which they consider to be responsible for reality not being how they want it to be. This anger can be directed towards a specific individual or the world itself. It is difficult to look into the unknown portion of our Jahari window and accept a painful truth about ourselves. In the same manner, it can be difficult to recognize something in our lives needs to change and take steps to realize this. It's easier to blame something outside of yourself and resent it. Oleander could not accept the fact that due to his height, he would never be the perfect soldier he desired to be. Instead, he grew angry at those who denied him, angry at anyone taller than him since they reminded him of the reason for his incongruence. Fueled by his resentment, Morceau Oleander chose an unhealthy method of changing himself into his ideal self-image. The diagrams in the White Room were the details of his plan to steal the brains of the campers and psychonauts, to use them to power an army of psychic tanks so that he could conquer the world. In this manner, he would be able to force the world to allow his self-image of the perfect soldier to become reality. This would relieve the incongruence he has been experiencing for most of his life, and allow his anger and depression to finally be alleviated. However, in the process, he would destroy the lives of countless others in order to resolve his personal identity crisis. Oh!